Far, far away in an internet land was a most unique graveyard, and not at all bland. This graveyard was different. It was not like the rest. It was made up of debit cards. Weird, I'll confess. Spooky, they stood lined up in a row, all the debit card headstones as dark as a crow. This rhyming got weird, you probably think. Caleb's gone crazy and his poetry stinks. But little do you know, I'm just trying to add some fintech news that's most certainly sad. See, today in the graveyard, I widen the plots as I bury two more and then share my thoughts. Ooh, spooky. What a weird way to start a video. Anyways, two more debit cards get buried today. And if you aren't familiar, I have a debit card graveyard that I made. The reason is, it seems that many fintech companies have a difficult time staying in business. And thus, many of the debit cards that I've reviewed on this channel are relegated to an inside joke. We've got the point card, probably my favorite out of all of them. We've got the dough card, which I honestly remember very little about. Then we've got the cheese card, cool name. The Ramsey Gazelle debit card, which I personally like the look of the most. The treat card, sweet because it was made out of wood. Enzo had some good cash back. And then in the last couple weeks, I've gotten several emails indicating the closure of two fintech companies, Oxygen and Onyx. Oxygen was cool. They had some good tiers of banking, but nothing terribly impressive in my opinion. Onyx was actually onto something. I thought they had a good service and they had pretty good cash back. And this debit card was metal, so that was kind of cool. Anyway, so they decided to shut down operations and neither of them provided any details at all, which begs the question, what the heck is going on with fintech companies? Why are so many of them closing their doors? Is chocolate milk at risk? I certainly hope not. Outside of the expansion of the debit card graveyard, that's what we're getting into today not chocolate milk fintech company. So let's jump in. Is it not weird that this is the seventh and eighth debit card that I've buried on this channel? I think there's one major lesson that we can learn from all these fintech companies that have either kicked the bucket or just kicked the banking service. And the lesson is this, fintech is a tough business. For one, there's a massive amount of competition. This is all anecdotal, but holy cow, over the past several years as I've been doing this channel, there have been a ton of fintech companies that have just popped up all over the place and produced all kinds of financial services with all kinds of benefits. Shoot, they're partly why my channel has grown. If you've watched very many of my videos, you probably know I do a lot of reviews of rewards debit cards. So I have to thank a lot of these companies for the growth. Certainly not thanks to the poetry, I'll tell you that. For two, there is a ton of regulation within banking. Now, most of these are financial tech technology companies. So they don't actually do the banking, but they provide the service through another bank. But there's still a lot of regulation involved. And honestly, it's only going to get worse with the bank failures that happened last year. The government wants to ensure that consumers are protected allegedly. And when a bank fails, that probably means there's more banking regulation coming. Three, who knows? A lot of bank failures that happened last year were thanks to the interest rates going up, which caused bond prices to go down, which essentially impacted the amount of cash that these banks had available. Maybe these bond prices also impacted some of the banks that these financial technology companies do their banking through. Really, it's pure speculation at this point. Like I said, a lot of these are from financial technology companies. They are the ones that are shutting down, not the banks, to my knowledge. And last but not least, number four, there's generally less money to go around. Venture capital is a way for startups to basically pitch their ideas to these firms that can provide the cash for growth. S&P Global had an article about the amount of venture capital funds in the financial industry right now. And they said this, venture capital flows into financial technology companies fell for the second year, dropping 42% year over year to 35.45 billion dollars in 2023. 42% drop is a lot year over year. And McKinsey said something very similar in their own article. VC funding was hit hard globally and across sectors, dropping to 459.6 billion dollars in 2022 from the 683 billion in 2021. FinTech funding faced a 40% year over year funding decline down from 92 billion dollars to 55 billion dollars. Now obviously there's a discrepancy in numbers there, but it probably has to do with the timing that the studies were performed and the kind of qualifiers they set for their study. Either way, they both agree that 40% decline year over year is huge. This is something that I'd like to do a little bit more research into to see how venture capital funding is impacted by the current economy, what's going on with the federal reserve, interest rates, all that jazz. But what does this mean for you? First of all, don't freak out, especially if you bank with Oxygen or Onyx. Neither Oxygen nor Onyx are getting shut down by the Federal Reserve. They literally say how to get your money by transferring the money out, or you can get it sent to you via a check. Secondly, I think don't freak out about your normal banking. Just make sure that where you bank is FDIC insured just in case of a bank failure. Third, personally, I like having several bank accounts. If something happens where one is shutting down or gets shut down by the Federal Reserve, like in the case of Silicon Valley Bank, it's nice to know you can still have funds from another bank while everything 
get sorted out by the Federal Reserve. All in all, these fintech closures probably won't affect you that much, but I'll be keeping my eye on them, especially the ones that I've reviewed. And I'll keep you updated on what's happening in the world of money. For now, hit the like button if you like that poem or just appreciated the massive amount of work that I put into this. Now hit the subscribe button if you'd like to stay up to date. You can watch this video that I made about why nanobanks are shutting down or you can watch this video next.